This is a review of this drone from a FPV beginner's perspective. I'm not an absolute beginner when it comes to drones. I've owned this for five, maybe six years now, but it's very difficult to film myself with this drone. If I want to film myself, I need to use waypoints and active track does not work very well with this drone. And often I just have to fly after other mountain bikers with this drone. So I got this and this is a fully autonomous drone. It's super user friendly. Just push a button and it follows you like a little dog through the trails. The only downside with this is that it is a bit too slow for following a mountain bike. And it also goes a little bit wide through the trees. So I end up crashing this all the time. So the next natural step is to enter the world of FPV drones. So I got this. It is an entry level drone, but it's actually more capable than you might think. It's not only a toy. I will talk about the pros and cons with this drone that I found during the test I did the last two weeks. But my sole purpose with this drone is to chase a mountain bike down a hill or a mountain. This is what I aim for. But after having watched numerous FPV crashes on YouTube, I realized that creating shots like this is not an easy task. I wouldn't want to buy an expensive DJI Avatar drone only to brick it after a few tries. And trust me on this, when you fly your FPV drone in full manual mode, you will crash. Many times. I mentioned earlier that this isn't only a toy. The Aquila 16 has got several modes and speed settings to choose from. Right from beginner mode to full manual acro mode. Taking baby steps with this very affordable kit is a great entry point to the FPV hobby. But I've also had a few issues with this drone, which I will get to in a moment. Let's start with price and what you get for the money. This drone kit is only 250 US dollars and for that kind of money you will get everything you need to start flying. Mainly a good controller, a pair of goggles, the drone itself, along with a couple of batteries, a charger and some spare parts. Both the controller and the goggles are compatible with many other drones according to some common standard, which is a good thing if you want to invest in another drone. But really, to get somewhere, you will probably need a couple of extra batteries and a memory card to record your progress. Add to that a piece of software that works with the included controller. Because this is a story that goes from despair and disbelief to actually enjoy flying a FPV drone. It's not as straightforward as it seems. There is a rather significant threshold to get over and putting quite a few hours in the simulator helps greatly. I'm used to flying regular drones, car sim racing, flight simulators, etc. But nothing prepares you for flying a FPV drone in manual mode. It's not intuitive and it's a completely new skill you need to learn. And now I watch FPV videos with completely different eyes than before. Just flying in a straight line is a challenge. I look like an absolute noob here. Well, I am an absolute noob, but you get the point. It took me several hours to be able to fly like this in the sports setting, which is the setting I will use the most. It's a blend of full manual and beginner mode. It allows for some cool moves, but it doesn't catch you out as easily as manual mode. But let's start indoors. This is the beginner mode. It's not very different from flying a regular drone. There is some sort of a sensor to aid with the distance over the floor, but there is a lot more you need to do with the throttle to keep the drone at the right altitude. This is a great start to calibrate to how the drone reacts and to get used to fly with goggles, which is also a thing that you need to get comfortable with. Everything in the kit is paired, so getting started is very easy. So far, so good, so it's time to move outdoors. This is a city park in the evening where there are some shadows and here is where I found the first weakness with this drone. It's difficult to see what is happening in the goggles because of the brightness and the low resolution. In complete sunlight it's okayish, but I cannot see any of the trees in the shadows. I guess Beta FPV has to save money somewhere to be able to offer a complete FPV kit for $250. Secondly, the drone is sensitive to the wind. There is a constant battle to not drift away. 
Eventually, I get better at compensating for the wind, so it's not a huge problem. But my recommendation is to not fly this in higher winds than in a light breeze. And finally, the drone often wobbles in certain spots, where there maybe is a bit of turbulence. It never crashes though, and after a few weeks I also learn how to fly to avoid the wobbling for the most part. But to be completely honest, I didn't enjoy my first outdoors FPV experience because of these issues. The second flight adds even more problems because there is a setting that adds more power to the transmitter. It's set to 25 milliwatts as default, with 350 milliwatts as the highest setting, which means a stronger signal and better range. This didn't work at all with my drone. After taking off, the signal cuts off completely after only 10-20 meters away. And after fiddling with the settings to add the power levels, I never get a good image in my goggles. With more power, it's even a worse image than anything. Lots of research and reaching out to beta FPV, I finally bring out my screwdriver to perform some surgery. Apparently, the connectors can get loose after some crashes, along with various other problems. But to keep the long story short, my problem is this little wire. It's an antenna that transmits the image from the drone to the goggles. It was slightly bent and when I straighten it, the image is perfectly fine and I can finally use that 350 milliwatt setting. After all of this research and reading up on things, I've started to realize that the FPV hobby is different from flying regular drones. Opening up the drone, mending broken parts, playing with different settings is part of the hobby. There's a lot more troubleshooting and fixing things, and there's also other software available to further tweak the flying characteristics and fine-tuning specific functions. I kind of get it now what the FPV hobby is about. Wiser and a somewhat better FPV pilot, I go to a mountain bike trail to further polish my skills. Here I only use the 25 milliwatt transmission setting, but the image is fine anyway, even if I was over 100 meters away with the drone. Again, I'm fighting the winds and I struggle to follow the trail. This isn't easy. Having four batteries is almost a must even if I bring a power bank to charge the batteries between the flights. Each battery is at around 1100 milliamp hours, which is great because that gives me a flight time at around 6 to 8 minutes, and that's plenty in the FPV world. Charging takes around 30 minutes depending on how depleted the batteries are. You can charge two batteries at the same time with the included charger. This is where I experienced another issue. At two occurrences, the drone disarms itself mid-flight and completely shut off. The recordings for these flights were only white noise, even if I could see an image in the goggles when flying. Weird. The second time this happens is over very tall grass, and I spent over 15 minutes to try to find the little drone, even if it drops pretty close from where I stand. I really would want to have a find me function, a buzzer to locate the drone. Another weird thing happens when I'm close to the drone. The propeller suddenly spool up for a brief second and I can hear where the drone is. That's relief right there and from now on I'm very cautious where I fly. You're kidding me. <laughs> I would never fly this over open water or even over a big field of tall grass. Learn from my mistake and stay over open ground where you can easily find the drone when you crash. Because again, you will crash. Anyway, this has never happened again and hopefully this was a weird one-off. After fixing that antenna issue, I've flown many times with absolutely zero issues with this drone. I'm more skilled, I've learned to combat the wind and to mitigate those wobbles. I'm comfortable to switch between beginner mode to at least the sports mode mid-flight. I'm getting the hang of it and finally I start to enjoy FPV flying. This is a satisfying feeling and I feel I'm past that threshold and I also trust the drone more now. And even after numerous crashes, the drone is in one piece, so it's very durable to say the least. So it's time for my exam, chasing a mountain biker down the trail. Bear with me, this is only a small drone which is a bit twitchy to fly and it's difficult to see a small mountain biker coming into the picture in these goggles. But I feel I'm in control, and finally I got to chase this little kid down the hill. 
only for a few hundred meters or so, but this is fun. I truly enjoy flying this drone now, and I will soon be ready to try the manual acro mode as well. I also feel that I'm ready to go to bigger drones, which I can actually film with. I've always had my eyes on the DJI Avata 2, but that's because I don't know any better. There are hundreds of other FPV drones with great image quality out there for a far better price, including a handful of drones from Beta FPV. I need to dive deeper into the FPV hobby. So do I recommend this drone kit? This is a case of what you get what you pay for. The experience hasn't been without issues, but at the same time fixing issues will always be a part of FPV flying with any drone. It's great that the controller and goggles can be used with other drones too, but I wish the image in the goggles was better. Still, this is a great way to learn and to see if FPV flying is for you, for very little money. I will still fly this drone to practice my skills and that steep learning curve is actually kind of fun. There are always areas to improve and makes the fun last longer.